there's a very good chance that within the past few years, you've heard the phrase El Nino. Today, we're going to take a look at what El Nino is, what causes it, and how it impacts the planet. El Nino basically is a condition that occurs when the normal conditions of the Pacific Ocean change. Normally, the eastern side of the Pacific Ocean has cold water. During El Nino, the eastern side of the ocean has warm water. And that's really what El Nino is. It's the abnormal warming of these ocean waters in the eastern part of the Pacific Ocean. Now, El Nino happens periodically. Scientists are still studying it to learn how frequently it occurs and what triggers it. To understand it, we have to take a closer look at that part of the Earth. So we're dealing with the area of the Pacific Ocean near the equator. If we look at the prevailing wind map in our reference table, we'll see that along the equator, we're dealing with two prevailing winds. We have these northeasterly winds and the southeasterly winds, which are converging at the equator, and they push the water towards the west, right? If the wind's coming from the east, the water will get pushed to the west. So this water is getting pushed to the west, and as a result, an ocean current forms. If you look at your ocean current map, you're going to notice the north equatorial current, which is flowing to the west, and the south equatorial current, which is also flowing towards the west. Because the warm water is getting pushed to the west, it allows cold water to come up along the coast of South America. And this is very important. Cold water has more nutrients in it than warm water. And so cold water uh, is better for supporting large fish populations. It turns out that off the coast of Peru is one of the top five richest fisheries in the world. So it's one of the five places on Earth where we get the most fish from. And it's because of this upwelling of cold water. Now, interestingly, not only does the warm water get pushed to the west, but because it's getting pushed, it actually makes the ocean higher on the west. And typically, it's about one half of a meter higher. We know that if the warm water is in the west, it's going to heat up the air in the west. And if the air is warm, it becomes lower pressure and it will rise. And of course, if air rises, it will cool to the dew point and condense. And so the western part of the Pacific Ocean is normally a very wet area with low pressure. This low pressure creates tropical rainforests in Malaysia and Australia. It makes it very humid, and that's normally what happens. When the air rises, it will now travel towards the east, and we will get the formation of a convection cell. And so the air will sink over South America. So South America normally has high pressure air, which of course is dry, giving them an arid climate. And you can actually see by the color difference here on the map that it is arid along the west coast of South America. So these are normal conditions. So let's take a look at El Nino. So during El Nino, what happens is those trade winds that were blowing, they weaken. And when they weaken, they basically disappear. So this warm water that's half of a meter higher, it's going to start to travel back towards the east coast of South America. When the warm water travels east, it's going to bring the warm air with it. So now the air over the eastern Pacific is warmer, and so it's low pressure. So now the air is going to rise, and it's going to cool to the dew point, and condensation will happen, and it's going to make wet, moist conditions over the western part of South America. Now remember, it is normally an arid region over here. During El Nino, it becomes wet. This rising air also basically flips around the convection current. So the air will rise, it will travel westward across the ocean, and now it's going to sink over Indonesia 
and Australia. And so now they're dealing with arid air because of high pressure. Normally it's low pressure. So it basically just flipped around the whole convection system and it completely changed the pressure of the air on the western part of the Pacific and the eastern part of the Pacific. Now, El Nino itself is named for the Christ child. El Nino means the boy, and the first N is capitalized, so it is a proper noun. Um, it was named El Nino because the Peruvian fishermen noticed that the fishing would sometimes be bad around Christmas time. And so they named it El Nino or the Christ child for when it happened. El Nino is going to impact the entire planet. It's going to impact weather conditions. Before we look at that, I want to just show you these two images. So this one is showing you the temperature of the water during normal conditions. So again, normally the warm water gets blown to the western side of the ocean. During El Nino, it moves back and now it's on the eastern side of the ocean. So let's take a look at how El Nino impacts weather conditions around the world. If we look at the map down here, all of these colored areas, these are atypical weather patterns. These normally do not occur. So for starters, we're going to notice that the country is along the western part of the Pacific, which are normally wet, are now going to be very warm and very dry. And as a result, they're going to be plagued with droughts and forest fires. Those are very common. It's also common for those things to happen in regions of Africa as well. Countries on the eastern part of the Pacific, which are normally dry, are now going to be wet. And they're going to have to deal with flooding conditions. And that's going to happen on North and South America. It's normal for California to have flooding during El Nino conditions. El Nino is also going to impact the strength of the low pressure systems, or the storms in the Pacific Ocean. In the Atlantic Ocean, it actually has the opposite impact. It actually lowers the strength of storms and hurricanes. So that is one benefit. But what I want you to understand is that El Nino doesn't just affect the areas around the Pacific Ocean. It affects weather worldwide. Scientists don't fully understand El Nino. We don't know how often it happens. Um, it is a cycle, but it doesn't happen at a certain frequency. Uh, there's really no way as of now to predict when it's going to happen until we start seeing it happening. So as scientists continue to study El Nino and we learn more about it, um, hopefully we'll be able to have a better prediction system in place, which of course would then try to minimize the impact of these El Nino conditions. So I hope that this gave you a good introduction to El Nino. Tomorrow in class, we'll talk about it some more. We'll do an activity to help you understand it on an even deeper level. Thanks for watching.